All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are finally starting with fluid dynamics, meaning just, you know, fluids in motion. We're just doing an introductory lesson with this, so um, here we go. So mass flow rate, I guess this is kind of like the guiding principle of fluid dynamics. So on this topic, we assume that fluids are incompressible and having no viscosity. When fluid is moving through a pipe, the amount of mass passing through any given section in a certain amount of time must remain constant. This means that in areas where the pipe narrows, the fluid will flow at a faster rate. So if we see here, this part here, we can see that the area is a lot bigger, especially when we compare it to here. And what that means is it's going to be moving uh, with a certain velocity. It's going to be flowing at a certain rate. However, when it gets smaller, okay, so when it gets smaller over here, we can see that there is not as much area, but it needs to flow at the same rate. The amount of water needs to flow at the same rate. So if there's not as much space, that means it's going to be moving a lot quicker. Okay, so that's just the, that's just the key thing to know here. Um, and this is the, one of the key formulas here. Okay, to see where this comes from, you can look at this uh, derivation uh, video which is which is I would say is pretty good to see um, but that's the one of the key principles here okay okay so let's look at this conceptual example number 20 water is flowing from a wider section of a pipe into a narrow section of the pipe as shown in the diagram to the right what happens to the speed of the water as it transitions to the more narrow part of the pipe okay again always pause it if you don't want to just hear it it's really good to just think for yourself uh, even if you're wrong a lot of the time all right, but we just talked about this. The speed should be increasing. So remember, the amount of water that is passing over time needs to be the same over here. And since it's smaller over here, that means it needs to be moving a lot faster at that point. Okay, moving on. Water falls, uh, water flows from A1 to A2. Uh, if A2 is equal to 3 of A1, meaning it's 3 times as big, what is V2 compared to V1? Okay, so we should know again, the formula we have is A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So let's look at this. If v, uh, A2 is equal to three of A1, meaning it's three times bigger, we can rewrite it like this. A1 V1 is equal to three times A1 uh, times uh, V2. So now we have to think, how does V1 compare to V2? And remember, if they equal each other, that means V2 has to be one third of V1. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Um, we should have hit A over there. And that should make sense. It's, we're going from a small section to a big section. So it should be slower in this bigger section. Okay, moving on. Water is flowing from A1 to A2, as shown in the diagram to the right. If V2 is equal to 4 of V2, what would A2 equal compared to A1? Okay, so very similar to the last one. So I highly suggest pausing this if you could not figure out the other one, or if you did figure out pausing it as well. But again, we have this formula here. Uh, V2 is equal to 4. Ooh, this is a 4 of V1. Sorry about that. Uh, A1 uh, oops. A1, V1 is equal to A2, uh, 4, V1. So remember, they again, they have to equal each other. So what this means is A2 here needs to be equal to 1 fourth of A1. Okay. And then it would all make sense. So it should be B. Okay. Moving on. All right, so let's look at this math example, first math example for fluid dynamics. What is flowing from a wide, oh, sorry, what is? Water is flowing from a wider section of a pipe that has an area of 0 0.08 meter uh, squared into a narrow section of the pipe that has an area of 0 0.05 meters squared, as shown in the diagram on the right. If the water is moving with a speed of 18 meters per second in the narrow section, how fast would it be moving in the wide section? Okay, so let's just kind of write some things down. A1. Uh, the wider section of the pipe has an area of 0 0.08. Okay, so this is 0 0.08. A2 is equal to 0 
and then we know if the water is moving with the speed in the narrow section okay so we know this is equal to 18 meters per second and we want to know what the speed is in the wider section great so we should know a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 a1.08 v1 that's what we're looking for a2.05 v2 18 okay shouldn't be too bad um, just putting to our calculate 18 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.08 and we get 11.25 meters per second one way we could kind of check this is in the narrow section it's going faster so it's like okay it looks promising there you go all right i think last one for this uh let's see uh, water is flowing from a wider section of a pipe that has a radius of 0 0.04 meters oh, 0 0.07 meters into a narrow section of the pipe that has a radius of 0 0.03 meters as shown in the diagram on the right to the right if the water is moving with a speed of 12 meters per second in the wide section how fast would it be moving in the narrow section okay so a few things here they don't one thing to know is they don't give us the area so they give us the radius of the circle uh, the wider section is I'm gonna call this r1 is equal to 0 0.07 uh, and then they give us the radius of this circle I'm gonna call this r2 which is going to be equal to 0 0.03 anything else they give us okay in the wide section it's moving at 12 meters per second okay and we want to know what this is okay so first thing that we have to do is we need to find the area okay so we can think about what is the area of a circle and hopefully we know but if not you hopefully have a formula sheet that can help you uh pi r squared okay so for let's do r1 r1 is going to be equal to uh 0 0.07 squared times pi which is going to give us 0 0.015 meters squared. R2 is going to give us 0 0.03 squared times pi. And that's going to give us 0 0.0028 meters squared. Great. Um, now that we found the area of both of them, sorry, why did I say R1? This should be A1 and A2, okay? Now that we found that, we could just kind of plug into the formula. A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2. A1 is 0 0.015. V1 is 12. A2 is 0 0.0028. And we're looking for V2. So let's plug this in. 12 times 0 0.015 uh, divided by 0 0.0028 and we get 64.29 meters per second and it shows that yeah it's quite a bit fast it is faster so it looks promising okay um, all right so next time we're going to be talking about Bernoulli's principle which is a bit more complicated it's a little intimidating looking at that formula but it shouldn't be too bad and i hope to see you with, with that one thanks for watching guys